Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today I have my first impressions of Cyberpunk 2077. Now mind you, this is not a review of the game because I haven't beat it yet. It takes 25 to 30 hours just to beat the game, and that's without engaging in all of the other quest lines and other activities, so I have only experienced a mere fraction of the game at this point. That being said, I have played this game enough to wholeheartedly recommend it to someone who wants to be whisked away to a sci-fi fantasy world that's better realized than anything I've seen, maybe ever. The Blade Runner films are without question the quickest and easiest comparison to Cyberpunk 2077. This game takes a slightly less neo-noir approach to its style, but the depth and detail is seemingly infinite. It's sort of like saying, what if in Blade Runner when Deckard is eating Chinese food at the street vendor, you could just take control of him, walk him down the street, and see what kind of adventure you fall into. And the visual density of Night City is almost overwhelming especially when you realize that every inch of the environment is handcrafted down to the smallest details. Even the crosswalks are animated. Now the art style does have a little bit of camp to it, so think Blade Runner writing and world crafting meets some of the cheesy characters or set design you would find in Johnny Mnemonic. And I realize that, like, almost everyone listening to this probably hasn't seen the 1995 film Johnny Mnemonic, but if you think this game didn't use it for inspiration, then, well, you're crazy. Keanu Reeves is literally the star of that movie, and it's one of the few big-budget cyberpunk films ever made. It has Yakuza assassins with laser garrot wire. In fact, a big plot point of Johnny Mnemonic is smuggling data in your brain, which Reeves's character has to do in the movie, and in Cyberpunk, a very similar plot point involving Reeves' character takes place once again. Anyway, I'll stop talking about this 1995 film, but if you're at all curious about some of the inspirations behind the game, it's certainly worth checking out. Okay, let's talk about some of those initial concerns that I've been reading about. Bugs. Well, I would be lying if I said I didn't have any game-breaking problems in my first play session. Cyberpunk isn't riddled with bugs, but I had one crash and one glitch that forced me to reload to a previous checkpoint in an 8-hour play session. Now mind you that the first 6 hours of the game is the prologue, which probably got playtested more than any other area, so it's possible that the bugs will actually get worse later. But ultimately, the two game-breaking moments didn't ruin my experience. I have heard that the bugs and stability on last gen consoles are the worst, but I really can't speak to that. As for performance, I've been playing the game with nearly maxed out settings at 1440p with RTX and DLSS enabled, and it runs well and looks incredible. Now mind you, it's also running on an RTX 3080 GPU, which I know most people don't have, let alone even have access to, due to supply shortages. But honestly, I think especially with Cyberpunk, DLSS is sort of a game changer, and it's probably the best way to play the game. DLSS allows the game to dynamically scale resolution using AI tech without sacrificing image quality to give you better frame rate. Sadly, this feature is only available on RTX cards, so the 2000 or 3000 series NVIDIA GPUs will be needed. My friend's been playing the game on an RTX 2080 and said that he can turn on ray tracing to max settings, but the frames do start dipping into the 30s and 40s. But even turning back some of the graphics settings a little results in an incredible looking game that can still be played at 60 FPS most of the time. I did experience some frame rate dips here and there, but nothing that really took me out of the moment. Actually, all of the combat sequences ran pretty well, and usually any frame slowdowns happen during cutscenes where my reaction time wasn't as critical. Alright, let's talk about the story and gameplay. Narratively, so far, I am absolutely hooked. The story and characters are fantastic. It's insane to think that the first six hours of this game are literally setting the scene for the rest of it, but I can see why. You have to learn how this new dystopian future world works, and the game really eases you into it through amazingly crafted story missions giving you insight into your own character, but also the shady gang and syndicate turf wars that are raging throughout the city. Stolen tech, power plays, and corruption at the highest level. This game throws you into all of it, but somehow doesn't suffer from cliche story writing. And personally, I've always struggled with single player games as I'm often turned off by campy writing and character choices that just don't make sense to me. I don't get that from Cyberpunk. Even though this game could easily fall into a much more campy and silly narrative, it remains serious and intriguing. I will say though that Cyberpunk feels more like a fantasy game than a sci-fi game. 
Despite the setting taking place in the future, all the technology concepts are borrowed from other works with little in the way of new scientific ideas or premises. So instead of it feeling like a game that's sort of inventing a fun idea built around new sci-fi tech, it feels more like a fantasy world built upon the tech of other writers. Which is basically exactly what Cyberpunk the tabletop game actually is. I don't consider this a critique, but just something to consider when getting into the game. You probably won't be blown away by the actual science, but rather the world crafting and amazing writing. Now one thing this game does particularly well is natural NPC interaction. Rarely do you have a moment where you walk up to somebody and then they just stand there waiting for you to hit like the talk button. Instead, a bartender will notice you, ask you what you want to drink, and a dialogue box will pop up. If you don't say anything, they might get weirded out, but in general, if you respond like a normal person would, the world feels normal and reactive. And this goes beyond basic conversation as well. If you accidentally run over a pedestrian while driving, the cops will actually gun you down. Don't expect to easily fight your way out of a run-in with authorities. This is actually really cool as it teaches you to respect the rules of the world. You're not some sort of GTA demigod that can run around and do anything. This is a living, breathing world with seemingly endless possibilities, but you still have to treat it like a living, breathing world that will react to you appropriately. Gameplay wise, the combat is fun and it seems to have a lot of avenues for how you want to play. One of the better parts of the action is hacking enemies mid-combat. You can bring up your scanner, which slows down time and allows you to not only survey your surroundings and mark enemies, but also decide if you want to run some badass hack on a bad guy that can make them go blind, detonate their grenades while they're still on their belt, or something even cooler. It's sort of like a pit boy from Fallout, but only for hacking. All the combat is still skill-based when it comes to aiming or melee. In fact, the melee side of combat is really well fleshed out with quick attacks, heavy attacks, stamina, blocking, dodging, and countering. It's clear that the game wants you to be able to take melee really seriously. Admittedly, it's not really my wheelhouse, but I'm certainly intrigued by the idea of specking your character primarily for melee combat. Now overall, I am very impressed with Cyberpunk 2077. It lives up to the hype and can even surprise a weathered gamer like myself. At $60, you're going to be hard pressed to find another game that delivers this level of story writing, world crafting, character building, and combat depth. It's a hell of an experience and frankly I'd like to get back to it. So thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this first impressions. If you did, leave a like, subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you guys next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.